everyone, Teacher Patty's here, and I am so glad you're here again at IES Kids Church Online. This month, we're finding out how we can care for the people in our neighborhood. We can do that by showing compassion. What is compassion? Compassion is caring enough to do something about someone else's need. We can show compassion to the people on our block, whether they live right next to us or just live here in Jakarta or whichever town you're living in. Who knows, you might make new friends, right? We will talk more about this in our Bible story time. Now, I'm gonna ask you to pause this video and go find anyone around you to take pictures of you watching Kids Church with us. And then you can send it to our WhatsApp number right here. All right, it's time to stand up and prepare our hearts because we will worship the Lord together. This month we are talking about compassion. I've got a great story that shows us how compassion is super important to Jesus. Jesus grew up in a town called Nazareth, in an area called Galilee. Jesus learned to be a carpenter from his dad, Joseph. That means he would have learned how to build things using wood. Jesus also got to know the people in his town, just like how you get to know the people in your neighborhood. When Jesus was 30 years old, he was baptized by his cousin, John the Baptist. After that, Jesus spent 40 days alone with God in the desert before he returned to Galilee. We can read how that went in Luke 4:14. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Holy Spirit. News about him spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. It was clear that there was something very special about Jesus. Jesus 
taught the people, and they were amazed at what he had to say. But then Jesus arrived in his hometown, Nazareth. Excuse me, did somebody say Nazareth? Um, yes. Uh, who are you? Oh, sorry. I'm Miguel. Nazareth is my hometown too. Jesus was actually my neighbor growing up. Oh, that's very cool. So I guess we could call you Miguel, the Nazarene neighbor. You could. All right, great. So uh, Miguel, tell us, what was it like to live in the same town as Jesus? It was amazing. Jesus was always so kind and caring. Jesus was so joyful and wise too. And he was a great carpenter, just like his dad. That was back then, before he started going around teaching everybody and performing all those miracles. Nice! So, what was it like when Jesus first came back to Nazareth? You know, after he had been um, baptized and spent time in the desert. Yes, I remember it well. Jesus came back, and on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue. That's basically like our church. We were all there listening to the teaching and readings like we did every week. What started out as a typical day turned out into one of the biggest days I remember. What did Jesus do in the synagogue? Why was that so special? Well, an attendant handed Jesus the scroll of Isaiah. Oh, right. Back then, the scriptures weren't written on pages in a book like we have in our Bibles today. In that time, parts of the Bible were written on scrolls. And there's the really cool part. It was a big deal that Jesus was speaking words from Isaiah to, to the people. You see, Isaiah was a prophet of God who lived hundreds of years before Jesus was born. God spoke to Isaiah about the Messiah, the Savior who would come to rescue God's people. And Isaiah wrote down the words God gave him. So, um, Miguel, what happened next? Well, Jesus opened the scroll and he read Isaiah's word about the Savior who was to come. Right, I know. Jesus read from Luke 4, 18 to 19. The Spirit of the Lord is on me. He has anointed me to announce the good news to poor people. He has sent me to announce freedom for prisoners. He has sent me so that the blind will see again. He wants me to set free those who are treated badly. And He has sent me to announce the year when He will set His people free. So, what happened after that, Miguel? Well, Jesus rolled up the scroll and sat down. We all waited, looking at him, wondering what he would say. I was so curious, but I never expected him to say what he said next. Never! The announcement came as quite a shock to you, huh? Ah, oh, yes. Definitely. Well, please, Tell everyone what Jesus said. You're holding them in suspense. Right. Jesus said, Today this passage of scripture is coming true as you listen. Whoa, do you know what that means? Jesus was telling everyone that Isaiah's words were about him. He was God's Messiah. He was the Savior the people had been waiting for for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Jesus was saying that he was the one who had come to bring freedom and healing to people who were poor, hurting, and mistreated. So, Miguel, were you excited? I mean, you'd been waiting for so long for the Messiah and now he was finally here, right, right in front of you. And you even knew him. You've grown up right next to him. 
How, how was your feeling? It was definitely an incredible thought that Jesus could be God's savior. I mean, like you said, we all knew Jesus. He was the carpenter's kid. He grew up right down the street. Then Jesus said something that made people angry, right? I remember, I, I, I read it from the Bible. That's right. Jesus said, the prophet is not accepted in his hometown. And he was right. People were willing to accept Jesus, that he is the savior. They couldn't accept that Jesus had to come to everybody and everywhere. I watched as people got up and ran Jesus out of town. How scary! I know. They took Jesus to the edge of the cliff. They planned to throw him over. Jesus was standing there on the rocks right at the side of the cliff. I was afraid he was about to really, really get hurt. But Jesus got away. He walked back through the crowd and he went to his way to a different town. Wow, that would be an unforgettable day. Anyway, thanks for sharing your side of the story with us, Miguel. You're welcome. I guess I have to head back to Nazareth. Let's give a big hand for Miguel, the Nazarene neighbor. It's hard to believe, but the people in Nazareth rejected Jesus. They didn't see Jesus for who he really is, the savior who had come to make things right for all of us. So Jesus left Nazareth and went to Capernaum where he continued to carry out his mission. The truth is, Jesus cared a lot for other people. That day in Nazareth, he was using Isaiah's word to announce what was most important to him. His entire purpose was to help and rescue others. Jesus lived a life of compassion. He saw people who were normally overlooked and helped those who were hurting. And when we follow Jesus, he teaches us to live that way too. Following Jesus means caring about others. Let's ask God to help us live with compassion and show others that we care. Let us pray now. God, thank you for caring so much for each of us. Thank you for sending Jesus to show the world what true love and compassion are all about. We can see how Jesus did what he said he had come to do. He came to bring freedom, healing, and hope to every person in need. Give us the strength to follow the example of compassion Jesus gave. Teach us to care for our neighbors and show your love in everything we do. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. It's pop quiz time. I'll ask you some questions and you can shout out loud the correct answer based on the Bible story you just heard. Are you ready? Question number one. What town did Jesus grow up in? Was it Nazareth? Was it Jerusalem? Or was it Bethlehem? The correct answer is Nazareth. Did you guys correctly? Question number two. In the synagogue, what book was Jesus reading? Was it the book of Proverbs? Was it the book of Isaiah? Or was it the book of Deuteronomy? The correct answer is the book of Isaiah. Last question. What happened to Jesus when he came back to his hometown? Did the townspeople throw a party for him? Did the townspeople throw flowers at him? Or did the townspeople want to throw him off the cliff? When Jesus came back to Nazareth, the people in town wanted to throw him off the cliff. Oh no, that's not good. But at least you all did good. Thanks for playing pop quiz with me. Hi, IES kids. I'm Teacher Dre. It's great to see you again. Let's read the memory verse of the month together. The Lord has shown what is good. 
has told you what he requires of you. You must act in justice. You must love to show mercy. And you must be humble as you live in the sight of your God. Micah 6 verse 8. Let's read together one more time, shall we? The Lord has shown you what is good. He has told you what he requires of you. You must act with justice. You must love to show mercy, and you must be humble as you live in the sight of God. Micah 6 verse 8. This is a very famous verse that talks about how to treat people. Many times it's quoted just as the three short lines, act with justice, show mercy, and be humble. Is there any part of the verse, especially those three things, that we could leave out but still follow Jesus? Could you follow Jesus and not care about justice? Not care that people get taken advantage of and hurt? Could you follow Jesus and want revenge on people you don't like? Could you follow Jesus and want everything to be all about you all the time? No! Justice, mercy, and humility are necessary to loving others the way Jesus does. Those three things aren't optional when we try to live and love the way Jesus did. This verse reminds us that following Jesus means caring about others. So this week, think about someone that you need to care about. Start praying about that person and maybe do something to show that you care about them. All right, see you again, kids. Hello kids, I'm Teacher Len. And in today's story, we found a simple fact that Jesus was the son of a carpenter named Joseph. A carpenter is someone who builds something using wood as the material. You know, things like tables, drawers, carts, or even houses. And speaking of wooden item, I have here with me one of my favorite home decorations, a wooden cross. As we all know, Jesus was crucified on a wooden cross. So, looking at this decoration reminds me of his greatest love for all mankind. I can't thank him enough for his goodness in my life. He died to save me and you from the power of sin. All we need to do is to accept him as our Lord and Savior and we are saved. Today, we also have learned that following Jesus means caring about others. This is what it means to be a Christian, to be a follower of Jesus Christ. We have to be like Jesus. We must have compassion for others. Just as Jesus cares for you and me, we also have to care for others. Jesus has given us the greatest sacrifice of all, which is his own life as an ultimate form of love and care. That's why every time I see a cross anywhere, it reminds me of the fact that I need to care for others as Jesus' follower. Let's do it, kids. Let's be someone who cares. In our Bible story, we heard Jesus tell his community the ultimate good news. He had come to rescue people who were lost and even save the world itself. How did they respond? Yeah, they got pretty upset, but why? Maybe they didn't think he could be the savior they'd waited for. Or maybe they thought Jesus was disrespectful, or maybe they wanted someone better or more famous to save them. The list can go on and on and on. At the very beginning of his work on earth, Jesus made it very clear what his mission was and how he expected his friends to act. Following Jesus means caring about others. Jesus even cared for the people who were mad at him. His whole plan was to free people from sin, help those who are poor or afraid, and show the world how to have relationship with God. That's a big mission. We can't do all of that, but we can do some of it. So friends, I have a challenge for you. Think about this throughout the week. What are some ways you could care about others? When doing this, always remember that following Jesus means caring about others.
So let's pray for everyone who had a birthday in this month. Lord, we thank you so much for the gift of life and another year. I pray that this year be the best year of our lives, that you teach us and you draw us close to you so we can know your love for us and so we can love you better and more. Thank you for everyone in Kids Church and thank you for your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.